Hey, hey, yo, it's David with I'm So Offended, and it's been a minute. I've been, uh, you know, I've been contacting, uh, in contact with some of y'all, and, and I've also had court stuff going on, and finally I said I was going to show you what I've been doing in court, and, uh, you know, uh, the stuff that I show, that I've shown on here is, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm the guinea pig. I'm the one that's going through it, and I'm... Like, I'm doing these things. Like, I'm not just telling, you know, showing things that I hear. Like, I am, in fact, doing these things. All right. So, first off, um, I'm not a lawyer. I don't practice law. This is not legal advice. This is for educational and entertainment purposes only. I'm not liable for whatever you do with this information. And, um, you know, feel free to hit me up and ask questions and whatnot. All right. So, um, I'm going to give you a little background here. Um, you know, I see that people comment things like, like, like surety bonds and they comment, uh, you know, eliminating child support with, um, you know, a 1099, um, you know, end of the year filing type of thing like that. And I hear all the, you know, just a, just a bunch of, um, like things that I haven't seen work with proof. Like I have, I haven't seen it and I've tried some of these things. And so I ended up, um, creating a contract, um, attempting to use the wording of my daughter as property, because originally that's how, uh, the constitution is, is made is, is written like, you know, way back in the day, like as far as like the bill of rights, and it wasn't until the 14th Amendment that, um, you know, they distinguish the difference between property and what is, uh, you know, like like a human or whatever, you know, um, which is also how they freed the slaves um, because, you know, basically they were considered three fifths of a person, um, you know. So so anyway, so I had created a contract and I had sent it to the baby mama, uh, you know, by certified mail. She signed it and received it. I sent her a second notice. She signed and received it. And um, a default, she signed and received. And then fi finally, uh, a final a final contract, basically. Um, I thought that this, you know, basically doing an administrative process that some of y'all have seen probably and have talked about, you know, from so-called gurus and what it is they do and eliminating this and that using the administrative process and all this other some shit i tried that and it failed it failed and i suffered because of it my daughter suffered because of it uh, i went to court trying to to say hey i have a valid contract you, you can't you know we we have a contract i sent it to her she signed for it you know and no it doesn't work that way and they saw it as a custodial interference. And so clearly that's something I'm never, ever going to do again. But I had done it in the belief from what people show and teach and this and that. So this was something that happened like over a year and a half ago. So since then, you know, we, we had a modification for parenting time um, because that is a judicial court when, when you're doing parenting time. But Okay, well, it depends. It depends because sometimes they, they have these family law judges that are commissioners and magistrates, and these are not real judges. So for the longest time, I had been in front of a commissioner, but this time I was in front of an actual judge. I was in front of a real judge, um, and we went in for a modification. And so modification in Arizona, everybody is shared custody. Everybody. The only difference is um, just the the times in which someone is granted and given and whatever and whatever. But at any point in time, mother and father can decide to do whatever they want. That's why family law is a court of limited jurisdiction, meaning they can say at the very minimum you can't deprive the other parent, um, you know, because they have their right to their child or to their kid, right? And so, um, but other than that 
parents are free to make their own schedules and parenting time and whatever. So anyway, so since I have a baby mama that doesn't want me in my daughter's life at all, she'll do anything and everything she possibly can to keep me out of her life. So uh, we went for a modification, right? So now at this whole time, I'd had like no contact with my daughter at all. Uh, she just wasn't allowing me to see her. Uh, she wanted to play everything out through the legal process. And, um, you know, and so we went to trial. And what they wanted to do was continue to deprive me of my daughter. They wanted me to go th to uh, uh, have a mental health evaluation. They wanted uh, there to be just, you know, just no contact at all. So we went to trial. And at trial, you have to submit a parenting plan. They did not submit one. They went to trial with the intent of me having zero contact with my daughter and going through several mental health evaluations and just, you know, a whole bunch of BS. And I know some of y'all have been there. So we ended up, uh, I ended up doing, doing pretty good out of that because I had already done uh, mental health evaluations. Um, these are things that, I mean, as much as you want to escape them, you got to play their game. You got to play their game because if you, if you, if you're defiant and say, you're not going to do this, you're not going to do this. You can't deprive me of my child. You're not going to do this. You know where you're going to end up with limited contact, supervised visitation, and just a whole bunch of BS. So you have to play their game. You have to play their silly little custody game. You have to do it. Okay. You have to follow the rules. You have to be perfect. You have to do the things they ask. And it sucks. It truly does. And some of you guys aren't happy about hearing me say that because you, we would all prefer to, to, to just have happen what is fair. But there's no such thing as fair in a court of law. There's no such thing. So you just have to play along. You have to play along and you have to do what, what they say. All right. If you disagree with me, tell me in the comments. But what I want to see is proof, proof that you did something different and it worked absent of an agreement. Like if the mom and dad have an agreement, yeah, you guys can do whatever you want because you have an agreement. But if there is conflict, if there is controversy, then it defaults to whatever the rules and codes and statutes are. <laughs> it is what it is. And it sucks. But anyway, so there was a ruling right and because of my custodial interference they asked for a bond that there be a bond like basically like i couldn't take my daughter home to have parenting time at home unless there's like a bond that, that for like the, the the amount they came up with was 5000 so $5000 bond um in order for me to be able to have parenting time with my daughter at home that's what they said all right and so um but at least i had continued parenting time Right. And so they ordered for, you know, my, my daughter to go through for for us to have some something that they call therapeutic sessions, therapeutic uh, visitation type of thing where there's someone there uh, uh, monitoring and and writing down and making like uh, some kind of assessment or judgment based on, you know, the interaction and whatever, whatever. So, you know, so I had to, and it's different from supervised visitation. Supervised visitation just writes down what's going on. Um, damn, I'm getting static. Sorry about that. Can you hear me? Okay. I can't really hear me, but all right. Sorry about that. So anyway, so, um, so that's what I had to do. I had to do three therapeutic visits with some agency that was there to monitor, uh, my interaction with my daughter, um, you know, one hour each, right? So we did that. And then there was, after that, after that part in the order, we had to do, um, it was supervised visitation for like a period of uh, two months. And then after that, I would be having unsupervised visitation and my daughter could come home and everything was great. So, but as long as I, as I paid $5,000 bonds. I put up a $5,000 bond for the court to hold um, 
you know, in order for me to bring my daughter home. Like they think like $5,000 is, you know, like, like a deterrent, you know what I mean? Um, you know, but, but it was something that, that the baby mama's attorney was able to convince them of, you know, um, obviously I wasn't going to do that ever again. You know, I tried something and, uh, and, and it failed and it sucks that I was led to believe in the nonsense that some of these guys put out there about property and children and property and, and, you know, and making your own personal contract without involving a judge and by doing it an administrative process. And it, it's nonsense. I'm sorry, but it's nonsense. It's nonsense. All right. So I want you, I, I want you guys to see me as the example that I tried that. I tried it and it failed. So don't do it. The moment I started getting remedy is when I followed their rules. When I followed the rules and played their little game is when it all started working out. Okay. And so the sessions went great. Obviously, um, my daughter was happy to see me. She hadn't seen me in like 11 months, but because her and I had such a great bond and, you know, I'm a fantastic father. I am, you know, a lot of us are, you know, we're just being unfairly um, deprived of our children because, uh, you know, because it's all about money, you know, for these attorneys and these judges. And it's all about money. None of them actually care about what's best for the kid. But yeah, you know, I'm a fantastic father and my daughter um, was happy to see me, was happy to see me and would hug me. And, and it was, and it was like, there was no time lost. Everything was just great uh, between us. So we had those sessions and we were doing supervised visitation and whatnot. And so part of the order that was written by the judge coming out of the trial um, um, said, you know, that I had to go through these therapeutic visits and then do the supervised visitation. And so, uh, but he left it open as far as like, should there be a reason to change it, you can change it and file something, you know, according to the rules, basically, you know, so, so that's what they did. So first things first, um, they got the reports from this, um, from this uh, agent, right with this agency, um, that it was just it, it was just full of lies, the lady just um, she, she, she has a monetary gain from these sessions. Um, I didn't trust these sessions and I recorded them to save myself, to protect myself. So um, make sure you check the rules of your state. You know, if it's a one party state in which you can record um, and you being allowed to record in one party, meaning yourself, then record everything. So I protected myself and I recorded the sessions. I had a grievance with the agent and we had a phone call, a conference call with that agent and her supervisor and I recorded that phone call as well. And all of it was necessary. It was all necessary. So in her report, she was stating that I need more, uh, another parenting class, like an extended one. She was saying that I, I need another 12 months of supervised visitation, just a whole bunch of nonsense that really, really was not needed. And this lady ha had a doc was a doctor or had her doctorate degree and so many years of experience. It doesn't matter. These people, they have session after session after session after session, and they one hour to make a judgment call on a controlled environment is ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. So, you know, I, I feel for those fathers out there that have had their kids taken from them because th they have some therapist or counselor, you know, monitoring just, you know, an interaction in a closed and controlled environment, which has absolutely nothing to do with what an environment, a normal environment between parent and child would be like, 
like out in the community, out in the public, at home. It's just it's just terrible. It's very, very terrible. And these agencies, they don't do anything for families. They don't do anything. They're all they're all just in it for the money. They're all in it for the money because the, <laughs> their price to appear in court is five hundred dollars. That's what it was for this lady. Yeah. And so, um, you know, they, they charge for everything. They don't care. It's all about money. Always. That's it. Your, your value as a parent is measured by the amount of money you have. Accept it. We are all worthless. Doesn't matter how great of a parent we are. We're all worthless. All right. Sorry, I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest. So here we go. So I had those three therapeutic sessions and I was like already starting um, supervised visitation that had already started to occur. And so the the supervising the the agent from the therapeutic visits sent out her report saying I needed a year supervised visitation and all these parenting classes and, you know, just a whole whole bunch of BS that obviously was not needed or necessary. Um, she had no idea. She just doesn't know what she's doing. She should not be in her position at all. So, so they filed this thing called a motion to alter or amend judgment. So this was the baby mama, um, and her attorney that filed this, as you can see here. So they want to alter or amend the judgment, the judgment being the the um the modification the parenting plan modification so we went to trial in october and they filed this in uh where's the date oh january okay so there it says the respondent through her attorney submits this rule 83 as you can see it's a rule 83 so you all have these same rules similar in your state. Now, this may or may not apply to you or whatever your situation is, but this is just something that I went through that I'm showing you uh, for you to be aware of. You know, whenever they're going to motion to do this or to do that, it has to be because of a rule and they have to notate the rule. They have to notate why or where it is they're, they're, they're getting the ability to do what it is they're trying to do. All right. So. This is a rule 83 where he's talking about in the court's under advisement ruling, which was the, the judgment, the order uh, from the from the trial on October 24 regarding phases of petitioners, gradual parenting time plan. The respondent learned. Look at this. The respondent learned for the first time that the petitioner's parenting time was expanded to include four hours every Saturday from two to six. <laughs> they lie. They lie, right? But I'll, I'll, I'll get to how this is, this is lies. Pursuant to a rules 83A, the court may on its, on its own or on motion alter, amend, or some of its ruling on the following grounds, materially affecting a party's rights. And then G, part of that same rule, mistakenly overlooked or misapplied uncontested facts, which were necessary for the ruling. The court ordered the respondent to lose every weekend for trips or activities by overlooking the respondent's work schedule and that the petitioner had never had every Saturday for parenting time in the many years of this matter. All this, this is petty shit. The lawyers get off on this. Petty shit that you and the mother can settle between your own. You, we're allowed to do this. Parents are allowed to like change the schedule whenever they want but the attorneys make money off of this petty shit this is what what it was about this petty shit it said prior to the ruling court made no inquiry of the respondent another lie nor was the respondent given the opportunity to provide input of times for the petitioner's parenting time and that was a lie we went to trial for modification of parenting plan and they chose not to submit a parenting plan but lawyers are allowed to lie these people are evil this man is evil so with emphasis on the rule stating materially affecting a party's rights 
The respondent and child like to visit family in northern Arizona on occasion. You usually do so on the weekends. Child has a cousin of approximately the same age. It is all just nonsense. She truly enjoys spending time with it. It is usually a day, a two-day trip to see them due to travel distance. The ruling allowed the petitioner to have parenting time every weekend, takes that family time away from the child and respondent, wherefore a petition, petitioner requests <laughs> He's a moron. They're not the petitioner. They're the respondent, but he put that. So this guy's a moron. Uh, petitioner requests that this court grant the following relief. They're the respondent. It should have said respondent requests. So A, revise the petitioner's parenting time to be every other weekend instead of every weekend and turn order for such and further relief uh, may seem appropriate. This was 20, 17th day, January 2023, right? All right. He did it under Rule 83. And then he also filed a motion for clarification. Get that one down and let me bring up. Here we go. So, so he filed one and he filed the other. Motion for clarification. And it's on ruling of supervised visitation and parenting time per recommendations, right? Which was the the agency. It was an agency, which is their name right there after per, but, you know, I took it out because I don't need you guys uh, making calls to these people, telling them, you know, that I'm, do that I'm doing this because I'm trying to help y'all. You know what I'm saying? So I don't need you guys, like, you know what I mean? I'm trying to get them privy to, you know, that I do this. So, I mean, it doesn't matter. I'm within my right to do this, but so anyways... So they wanted to change the ruling again. And they wanted to change it based on the agent that said that I needed the year of supervised parenting time, uh, some more parenting classes, and just some more nonsense that wasn't needed. So it says by their, their um, baby mama and her counsel, her attorney, according to Rule 84, want to motion for clarification of ruling of supervised visitation and parenting time. All right. It said, following the trial in this matter on multiple days, uh, October, and we ordered the parties to cooperate in petitioner participating in three sessions of supervised therapeutic visits. Uh, following that, petitioner will work through a parenting plan in three month intervals, supervised visits, supervised exchanges, bond of 5,000, like I said, supervised parenting plan. All right. So the sessions involved interviews with each of the parties, uh, three therapeutic sessions, a report, and recommendations. However, the order did not detail the recommendations would be addressed, therefore leaving the parties in need for clarification. The summaries in the report of the interviews with the parents revealed vast differences in, the, in their understanding of the situation. The petitioner exploiting the fact that the interview knew nothing of the history of the matter. These people just lie. They just love to lie. It's attorneys. I will, the reason why I'm showing you all this is because sometimes I know how you guys feel. How it feels to just have this mountain of lies be stated against you. And then it, 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 it gets you all anxious and you go to court and you got to respond to all of their lies. And, and they just tell all these lies and it just makes you anxious and and it's just very frustrating and it's hard to deal with. And I want you to know the, the weight of the lies that they did. But yet I still had to just look at this logically. I had to think of this. Um, if I was an attorney, how would I address this? You know, how would I, what, what would I, you know what I mean? You, 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 you got to think like the enemy, you know. Um, don't let the lies stray you and take over you, okay? Focus at the issue at hand. So that's why I'm showing you that I'm sure that some of you guys get the same thing, get the same thing, just documents and motions where they want to deprive you of your kids, just full of lies, just full of lies, okay? 
So I'm, I've been there. I am there. They continue to do this. They continue to just file paperwork of lies. All right? So here we go. Um, the petitioner exploiting the fact the interview knew nothing of the history of the matter, continuing to deny doing anything wrong despite the court's findings of his kidnapping the child for five days. He loves to use that word, even though during trial the judge told him that he wasn't allowed to use it. I didn't kidnap my daughter. I didn't. You know, I did it. What I committed was a custodial interference. Okay, that's that's the term that's of what actually occurred a, a custodial interference because I tried this moronic thing, um, you know, thinking that I had created a contract with the baby mama. It's not true. None of that stuff works. Okay, you got to seek your remedy, you have to do it their way. It sucks, and I'm sorry to, to have to tell you that that's what it's going to have to be but that's what it is so the doctor uh the, if the agent had discussions with the child prior to each therapeutic session with the petition in which the child told her that she was afraid the petitioner would take her again and not return her to her mother the child actually reported that she did not want to go to petitioner's house again only to visit him at the park when the child seemed to enjoy playing with the petitioner she did not appear to be concerned about leaving him when the sessions were over the doctor expressed many concerns about the petitioner's interactions with the child. The petitioner had to be reminded not to speak negatively about the respondent around the child, continued to claim the child was being coached, and he denied what had been reported in the police reports was accurate. The doctor's most telling observation was that petitioner and child did not have a father-daughter relationship instead, uh, but appeared to be only playmates, explaining the petitioner did not demonstrate any structure or guidance in his interaction with the child during visitations. On December 12th, the following completion of the therapeutic visitation, the therapist um, released her report and recommendations to the court and parties, recommending six to 12 months supervised parenting time for the petitioner, as well as petitioner attend extensive parenting classes. The findings of the doctor concerning the relationship between the petitioner and the child largely confirm the concerns reflected in the order set forth by the court. Doctor enumerated multiple concerns about the dynamics she had witnessed in the visits and suggested up to a year of supervised visits that would be in the child's best interest and better allow child to be more secure with her father. On December 15th, just three days following the report being released to the parties, the petitioner emailed a complaint and revised version of the report as perceived the visits had happened. So um, I I did um, said that that there was inaccuracies in the report, and they said that that I can um, make a request as to what the you know to ask for like to alter or to amend the report you know um and so since i had recorded the sessions and um and i had the luxury of the tapes so i was listening to the tapes and i'm like okay this is where your report was wrong and this is what actually happened and this is where your report was wrong and this is what actually happened and this is where your report was wrong and what actually happened because i had the tapes right um, now, I only recorded the first and the third session. We had three sessions. I only recorded the first and the third. Um, the second, it just, I don't know what happened. I tried to record it, and it just didn't record. Um, I, I don't know why, you know, because uh, I guess, like, my phone was still lit when I pressed the record button and put it in my backpack. And then, you know, I have, like, a bunch of things in my backpack, um, you know, because I got to take a bag into the session with, like, like toys and and snacks and stuff like that and so um you know so it must have just it must have just stopped all i know is i get out of the session and it didn't record but i recorded the first and third session so you know but anyway um and so they're saying um after my revised version of the report uh, about what had happened so um here they're, they're putting attachments by the way it says attachment b and then it says attachment C, right? And this is a mo motion for clarification, right? And then it said the petitioner wrote a six-page document. And in his true colors, the, the wording that they use, the stuff, they just put it in to agitate. That's what they want to do. They want to make me agitated. They want to make me anxious. They want they want to frustrate me. They, that's what they want to do. This is what attorneys do. They're terrible, terrible people. They don't do anything, anything at all that benefits the child. They don't. So 
um, wrote a six-page document in his true colors. The petitioner said uh, the mother made statements they were absolute lies and the numerous summaries of the visits that were written by the doctor were false. And on one occasion said um, what she wrote was a lie. The petitioner's document contained versions of each visit, changing the order of actions by the petitioner and child. The emotions each had displayed and rewording what was said by each petitioner claimed the, the doctor... Um, which is much respected in her field, made multiple false, misleading, damaging statements regarding petitioner. Petitioner failed to acknowledge any comments or recommendations made by the therapist were accurate. The respondent points to the first item of concern, the doctor's uh, report of the information given by the petitioner in his intake interview. The petitioner demonstrated that he's still unwilling to accept his wrongdoing by explaining that he is only following the court order. <laughs> he's saying that the... That I'm unwilling to accept wrongdoing, but yet that I only follow the court order. The nonsense that these people write. Uh, he stated to the doctor that he has revised the parenting plan, was not written right, therefore there was a misunderstanding. Lies. The petition continues to accuse the respondent of coaching the daughter and telling her he is a bad man. The petitioner previously ruled a vexation litigant and now again representing himself with, without counsel has confirmed that he has no understanding of the true nature of, nature of his actions and the consequences. He again denies that he kidnapped his daughter for five days after two evidentiary hearings and the findings of two different judges and he continues to assert that the police lied in their reports. He claimed in his rewrite of doctor report that he has never read the reports from the kidnapping. This claim is belied by the fact that not only did he quote those reports in some of his pleadings prior to obtaining an attorney, but he has shown those very reports as exhibits during the trial. But Dr. Report saying Mr. Quintero stated he had revised the parenting plan and it was not written right, therefore it was a misunderstanding. Petitioner claimed a different version of the statement that was not even close to what the doctor said. The doctor is experienced, professional, and carefully reports what is said in these interviews. <laughs> oh, man. So the doctor's recommendations were that for the minor child's best interest, the petitioner have supervised visitation in place for 6 to 12 months. In addition, doctor highly recommended that the petitioner attend extensive parenting classes. The petitioner has demonstrated that he believes that literally for every report written by a counselor or therapist in connection with this case that reflects unfavorably on him, that the author of the report is a liar and does not understand their job. The only counselor he counts on as being honest in their report are his counselors at Pathways to whom he withheld police reports reciting his conduct and the true nature of the matter. It is clear the petitioner is in complete denial of his actions being questionable in any way. The respondent is requesting clarification for the current order regarding the scheduling of supervised visitation. Point two sets an amount of time up to four hours per week for the petitioner's supervised parenting time each week, but without a day or time. The court did set a time and a day for the scheduling of unsupervised visitation from 3 p.m. to 7.30 on Wednesdays. The respondent and the supervisor for the supervising agency adopt the court's Wednesday schedule for the supervised visitation. The respondent requests clarification of the order and confirmation of the petitioner's parenting time will remain Wednesdays from 3.30 to 7.30 to allow the respondent and child to have a stable and consistent schedule to plan activities. Petitioner has also had a history of being late to visitations and or forgetting them completely. Just lies, man. Just lies. In the past, he has demanded modifications or makeup time, disregarding the orders that have been put in place at the time, as there is no provision in the order regarding that issue. The respondent requests clarification by the court to clear that should the petitioner or exercise uh, the Scheduled parenting time, he waives that time with no right to demand makeup time absent the respondent's agreement. The respondent requests that the court consider the recommendations made by the agent in this matter. The petitioner's reaction to those recommendations and overriding the element of the recommendation were made in the minor child's best interest. Uh, wherefore, respondent requests that this court grant the following relief. Clarify current orders in this matter to accept uh, the therapist recommendations, order petitioner to continue supervised visits six to 12 months. As recommended, set a review hearing following the time for a supervised visitations to consider therapist evaluations to whether the child both feels safe with petitioner and the fact is safe with the petitioner and whether to advance to unsupervised visitation. Order the supervised visitation on Wednesdays from 3.30 to 7.30 with the designated tip place, look at this, to be chosen by respondent and the supervisor for their convenience 
A respondent has a full-time job and goes to school. Her schedule is not at all flexible. The petitioner claims to not work and has no commitments to his schedule. Just lies, 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 and lies. And I know you guys have gotten documents from their attorneys just like this. Or that the, should the petitioner be late or miss scheduled visitation, he does not get makeup time, his time is waived. Order petitioner to pay all costs associated with supervised visitation. Order the petitioner to pay all attorney fees and costs. Or enter an order for such another uh, order and further relief as the court seems just and appropriate. Now think to yourself that you just got something like this. Something full of lies. Just looking to take your child from you. Working in conjunction with these agents that just want to take your children from you. They don't care. These agencies don't care. They're not there for you or your kids. The court doesn't care. They're not there for you and your kids. But you have to follow the rules. You have to play their game. You have to learn how to look at this, this document that I just showed you, and the other one, the motion to alter amended judgment. You have to be able to learn how to look at this and get frustrated but let it pass and focus on what are we doing here? What are they asking for? What are they invoking? What are we doing here? And how are we going to reply? That's where your focus should be. So everything between the first page and this last page is nonsense. It's all BS. The only thing that matters is what are we doing here? It's a motion for clarification based on Rule 84. Do you see it there? This is what we're doing. This is what they're doing. A motion for clarification based on Rule 84. Okay? And then you go to the last page. What are they asking for? That's what they're asking for. These are the things that they want. Let me... Uh, oh, you can't see part of it because it's... Let me see. There it is. So that's what they want. You just look at the, the first part, Rule 84. That's what they want. Okay? And then they did their Rule 85. So that was a Rule 84, and those are the things they want. And then their Rule 85... Rule, I'm sorry, Rule 83, alter or amend a judgment, and this is pursuant to Rule 83, right? Okay, motion to alter or amend a judgment under Rule 83, and this is what they want right here, wherefore. When you see wherefore, what they are requesting, that's what you see. Everything in the middle is nonsense, okay? Don't let it get you down. Don't let it bother you. It's nonsense. So, we'll get to it. Then this is what the court ordered. Um, so here, they did a... Well, not ordered. Basically, well, the court had ordered that I respond, basically. Because they received it, and so the court ordered that I respond. They're saying, respondent's motion to alter amend a judgment. The court has received their motion on January 17th, and it is ordered that the petitioner shall file a response, right? By no later than 30 days, by February 20. Okay, I have to respond to this, right? Rule 83, their motion to alter amend a judgment. All right. And then they also did one for this one. Rule, 80, rule 84. Same thing. Regarding respondent's motion for clarification on ruling, the court received the respondent's ruling uh, respondent's motion it is ordered by no later than February 7th petitioner shall file a response so I have to file a response and they set a hearing so there was a hearing set February 16th okay 
So now we're getting into about 40 minutes. So I guess I'm going to have to break this down into several parts. Um, so right now we have that they filed a Rule 83 motion and a Rule 84 motion. Uh, this is out of Arizona. So if you guys want to play along, I want you to leave me in the comments how you would respond. How would you respond to getting one of these Rule 83 motions? How would you respond to getting one of these Rule 84 motions? All right, so this is going to be probably a three or four part video series because um, I did my response, they did their response, we had a hearing, and then it went into another, yeah, and we'll get into all that. All right, so uh, for now, um, I know this has nothing to do with child support, but I had mentioned that I would be doing custody videos, and this is um, how I deal with and for you, hopefully it can help you guys if you happen to get one of these motions filed against you, or at least it somewhat shows you that I too get these kinds of motions. I do get these kinds of things that, you know, the baby mama attorney files against me. But um, I defeated this, but I'm going to show you how I did it, you know. Sure, I already revealed that I defeated it, so there's no suspense. That doesn't matter. What matters is how I did it. Both of these motions I defeated. All right. So uh, uh, this is uh, part one. All right. Hit me up. Um, later.